In today's video, we're going to be exploring one of America's deadliest ghost towns, located in eastern Nevada. Now, 72 people were shot here before the first person died of natural causes. So this brings up a couple questions. What made this town so dangerous? Why were people still moving here when it had such a bad reputation? And what does the town look like today? So we met up with some locals that are going to show us around town, and we're going to explore one of America's deadliest ghost towns. Alright, before we go explore the town of Pioche, I think it's important to talk a little bit about the history. It all starts in 1864 when some people traveling through discovered high grade silver ore right there in the valley of modern day Pioche. So they actually settled there and they started to mine this silver. But the Indians that lived in the area didn't like them around there, so they carried out a very violent string of raids and murders and stuff. So they'd come into the little city they had built, kill everybody off, and it was so bad at the time that all the original settlers of that area had to leave for fear of their life. So it wasn't until about 1868 to 1869 that they were able to get in there with enough people and actually, you know, safely be able to mine and do their thing there. They mined $5 million of silver ore. So, with that much money, that rule of an area, there wasn't a sheriff at the time, there was no police, the only law was a gun, people were getting shot left and right. Shootouts were so rampant in the area that they actually had to dedicate a cemetery named Boot Hill Cemetery just to the people that were getting shot and murdered. So, Pioch was so deadly, in fact, that it was probably the most dangerous place to be in the entire country for its time. It was more dangerous than Tombstone, all these other ghost towns you hear about today. Now it's still technically quote unquote a ghost town, but there's still a little over a thousand people living in that town. It's an awesome place if you want to go visit, jam packed with history, and uh, we're going to go ahead and explore it today. Welcome to the little town of Pioch, Nevada. This one is absolutely loaded with history, and we actually lined up a few interviews of some locals we're going to talk to and they're going to show us around this awesome little town. So this is downtown Pioch right here. As I turn the camera you're going to see all the way to the other side of Pioch. So that right there is Tilly's gas station. It's pretty much the heart of this city now. It's where everybody gets their gas and stuff. We're actually staying here. So these are the cabins. If you guys want to, to visit here you go to Tilly's check in. They got cabins right here. I would recommend getting reservations because in a small place like this, there's not a whole lot of places to stay. A couple hotels. Other than that, you know, beautiful place. We're staying in the cabins. They're priced really good. And it's just a cool place to come hang out, you know, just visit. Everything's within walking distance. Nice weather out here. Oh, yeah. Every day's high is only like 90s and the mornings are actually kind of cold, like low, low to high 50s. <laughs> Low to high 50s, somewhere in the 50s. <laughs> this little guy. Come on, no smoke. We're gonna put all the footage of you singing on this video. We're gonna put all the footage of you dancing. Yeah, no footage, nothing. What do you want? All right, Juju. What do you think about this little town? <laughs> you gotta get the new for it. No. Well, what do you think? <laughs> Give me a second, I'm camera shy. All right, so we're here in Pioch. We're meeting up with a friend of ours mm -hmm. to show us around. She works at one of these restaurants here and they said that they want to show us around the town and what better way to hear it than through a local's perspective. How's it going? Good, how are you? Good, good. So this is Christy. How long have you lived in Pioch? Our family lived here for about eight years and then we moved down to Panaca, but we've been in the area for 15 years. Okay, so you know everything about this town. It's very small in eight years, so we're yeah. good. All right. You look familiar. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so the first stop is the museum. We're going to check it out, take a look around at all the stuff that kind of has been in this town and the history of it, and then continue to look around at the actual buildings. I'm a big gun guru, and I really like history as far as this side of things go, because in the Wild West, like the, the revolver and these six shooters are what won the West. There's an old six shooter that they found in a grave in Boot Hill Cemetery right down the road from all this. Balls and bullets. So a lot of these were found around the area. And it's pretty crazy to think because here in, in Pioch, I've heard all these rumors. It's some like 75 people were killed before one person died of natural causes from all the shootouts and duels they were having. And they would have been dueling with something like that old school six shooter right there. And it's weird, they found that in somebody's grave, so was he killed in a shootout and they just buried him with his gun or what? It's kind of crazy. That's interesting. That many people were killed here. There was a bunch of 
arguments, a bunch of shootouts. A lot of the land was available and up for grabs, right? Yeah, so uh, some of it probably would have been like people dying in, you know, the old classic Wild West problems with other people. Yeah, and they really didn't have law and order for a while. The town was started in 1864, so that's like probably 10 years without What's any that? law and order. Oh, man. This is cool. An old, uh, the old firefighters. Fire Look at all these medicines. Half of these probably had heroin in them. <laughs> I don't know if I'd take that one. Look at that thing. Cold tablets. 666. <laughs> I wonder if uh, Dr. Springer, one of his old potions, is in here. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's right. That's Our that's last video. <laughs> Went to a, a spot that was a fake hot spring a dude did. And uh -huh. He was a, a con artist. So he was tricking people into drinking oh, like yeah, a salt telling potion. Him, yep. Telling them it would heal them. Yep. You'll find a lot of these old potions, or not potions, but medicines. They'll have like cocaine and like actual drugs in them. And it tells you right on the label. All right, here we have a couple of random guests. How you guys doing? You know what I mean? Now that's interesting, look at that. There's a cool rock. And these are some of the native arrowheads and stuff, spearheads that they have been using back in those times. It's a squeaky floor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, props are squeaking. <laughs> that actually happens a lot more than people think when uh, big bucks fight. Mm -hmm. They get tied up and then they just both end up dying. P.O.T. record, September 1873 to March 1874. That's a lot of writing for a town with 10 people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, back in like the 1800s, they had over 10,000 people living in Pioche. Oh, a lot wow. of them in mining or mining camps and tent camps and stuff. But yeah, I couldn't even imagine fitting that many people in this little tiny town. Yeah. All right. We just exited the museum. Pretty cool spot. If you guys come through Pioche, definitely recommend looking at the museum. A lot of the old stuff in there was actually from here. But one thing to note, this would have pretty much been downtown Pioche right here behind us it's not very big just a little stretch it's super cool so now we're gonna walk around and check out and talk about a little bit of the stuff that was happening in these streets it's pretty interesting stuff now imagine 1870 right here on these streets somebody had a problem with you and you'd say I challenge you to a duel happened 70 something times before one person died of natural causes think about that every other person you looked at you were probably challenging to a duel take his gold <laughs> take his land that's when Pretty you rough walk spot. Up. Yeah. That's this when I would say, Juju, I got a problem with you, man. Straight gunslinger. Six paces, six shooter, turn and <laughs> <laughs> So this road right here was part of the old highway. So 93 goes back in front of Pioch now, but it used to come up what they call Snake Road. And then this was the old highway. And this actually had a lot of brothels and bars up on it. Hmm. Like the whole street. So I always see this building right here. It's the Pioch Hospital. That thing's obviously no longer in operation, but back in, oh, in the old fire station. Yeah, that's our newer fire station. I think the hospital was built in the 30s, and they used it until like 1950-something. Oh, so wow. there's several residents here that were actually born in that hospital. So this would have been the highway right here. Obviously a little old road, but back in the 1800s, they were still on like horse and wagons yeah, and stuff. Yeah, carriages. And yeah, so they didn't need a big, massive paved highway. So that's... The legendary cricket building of Pioch. Yeah. <laughs> it's cool, that's a little nice spot. So you were saying that they built that to kind of look Rep like how yeah. it would have? Replicate how mining towns would have looked because that's what a lot of miners lived in, either tents or buildings put together with scrap metal. Mm -hmm. So are a lot of these buildings that still stand right here, are a lot of those original? Yeah, so the Alamo Club has been there since like 1890 and it was a bank originally mm -hmm. and then it became a bar in like 1900 so it's still there it's got it's got the vault in it and everything so all these and then the silver cafe they're saying that that was the first restaurant in all of nevada right? yeah that's insane that restaurant the silver cafe was the first restaurant in all of nevada this place's history runs pretty deep that was the first one yeah the first restaurant in all of nevada I have to go eat a burger with extra cheese there later. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of people that are watching this from Vegas, the Valley's got a few million people, but little cities like this were actually 
at the time way bigger than Las Vegas was. A lot of that just has to do with, you know, where the trains were built and stuff. So there's a whole history lesson behind Vegas we can cover one day, but this place is pretty interesting. I'm Brian. Brian, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And your family bought this place? Yeah, my family bought it back in September and they took it over and I came, moved back down from Washington to, oh, to, uh, to run it for them. So how's business? Is it still pretty good? It's been going all these years. It's decent. Um, I've heard that this summer is pretty slow. We really don't have no history to tell how the business is going because we just took it over. But we do business every day. We're doing all right. We're keeping our heads above water. So y'all should come check it out. All right, it's we're going in there right now. <laughs> what do you recommend? What'd you guys eat the last time you were here? I think it was a Southwest Spicy Burger. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the barbecue burger is pretty good too. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's got bacon and onion rings. And we, we fresh cut our fries here. There's nothing, nothing's ever frozen. So we're just trying to create good food for the community. You got all some right. of the yeah. best fries I've ever eaten here. Nice. <laughs> they're yeah, good. Yeah, they're yeah, very they're good. good. They're I appreciate good. that. Going in right now to eat. Hey, thank you guys. Yeah, thank nice you. Meeting you. Nice, nice meeting you. Nice meeting you too. So we met Tim out here. How's so it going? What brings you out to this little desert town? So I chaperoned some kids from Missouri who are in 4-H. Uh, they're here for uh, training for shooting sports to become national shooting sports ambassadors. And just being the chaperone, once I got here, I didn't have anything to do. So there are about uh, eight of us who are chaperones to bring kids from all across the country. Uh, and so we're out killing time and just uh, coming to check out this historic town and see what's up about it. So, so far it's been, it's been really interesting. Did they tell you about the uh, murders that happened here when it first started? <laughs> so, uh, no one told us about that. However, uh, a little internet search on the way up and doing a little research, yes, uh, we, we heard about all those murders that for, for a year's time it had 60 or 70 percent of the, yeah. all of the murders in the state. So that was pretty fascinating. I hope that's changed. <laughs> that hasn't been a lot in years, but all right, it was nice meeting you. Yeah, pleasure. Thank you. you hope bet. you guys have safe travels. Thank you very kindly. So these are old pictures from the Silver Cafe that they have in there. This was a booming town at one time. There's all the kids. That was a train that came through here. Look at all those old cars. That's interesting. That'd be worth millions of dollars today. Thank you. I got the Philly cheesesteak. That barbecue burger they're talking about. Where's this other ranch going? Looks great, doesn't it? Delicious. They got some amazing fries. The burger was good. Some stuff. You like your burger? Yeah, it was good. It was good. This right here was a car dealership? Uh huh. Which I can't even imagine there being enough people to actually have a dealership. But they yeah. turned it into a grocery store since. But oh, wow. Was there any major fires? that happened here back in the day? Lots of fires. Towards the 1900s, they had a really big fire that burned down like a third of the town. Oh, wow. And they built the Overland in the 1940s, and then they had a fire and it burnt completely down, and they rebuilt it. Back in the day, I always hear in these old small towns, they always used to have problems with big fires. Yeah. It was hard to stop them back in the day. They yeah. still are hard to stop. So do, do you know what this would be right here? The this Masonic Hall? Masonic Lodge. Huh, huge Masonic temple. It started in 1873, one of the oldest. So they still have meetings here, but I don't know anything about the Masons. Hmm, that's interesting. So you're saying that this house right here on the corner is for sale? Yep. Wow, if you want to move to Pioch, looks like it's a multiple story. Beautiful view. <laughs> yep. <laughs> a lot of the properties out here have mine shafts. It's like on connected their to them? Oh wow. Yeah, so that one was an old mine shaft and they they closed it so people wouldn't fall in it, but you could see how the rocks just kinda Yeah, they kinda collapsed. Yeah. So there's mines all underneath this whole town. So what what were the main things they were mining out here? Was it gold, silver or it was silver in the beginning. I think they took out like six hundred million dollars in silver ore. Wow. And in today's amount, would that be like eight hundred billion? I don't know. Be yeah. yeah, that'd be a whole lot. Yeah. This was, you can see the information on it, but this was a hotel. They even had some presidents stay in it. United States presidents? Mm hmm. Built in yeah. 1895. Herbert Hoover stayed here. Oh, the one that built the Hoover Dam. Mm hmm. The stories of a place like this could tell, huh? Right. How many shootouts they saw? Yeah. <laughs> How many hole patches they had to patch? Yeah, bullet holes. Yeah, and bullet holes. Who knows, whatever else. So these are some of the old mining carts that they got on display. Super cool stuff. 
So this is the million dollar courthouse. And it started out where they had a budget of $27,000. It ended up costing the county a million dollars to build this. To build this right here. Yeah. Well, from, so I, from 27,000 to a million. Yeah. Somebody messed up. Right. <laughs> wow. Or got paid off. Yeah. So this is where all the people that got in shootouts would have had to come by and explain their story. They used to make their courthouses really nice. We could go look at that jail. Do you have to walk through to go in there? Yeah. All right, let's go check it out. All right, G, what do you think about this place so far, this town? It's pretty cool. A lot of these buildings, what fascinates me the most is that back in the day, the fact that they were able to build all these things, even just the simple things like guns and things like that with such limited resources. And they said way back in the 1800s when it was built, it cost them a million dollars. Yeah. The, what is that? The inflation? That's probably like 100 million now. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. It looks like you would have bought stamps and stuff like that. Who knows? Maybe this was for mail or kind of like a P.O. box in a way. It's cool stuff. Look at this. <laughs> you think that's our own? Uh, I bet you it's recreated, but it kind of looks like Jew, don't no? it? <laughs> <laughs> we got a five grand. <laughs> this book has every arrest from the beginning of this town to... Man, they arrested a lot of people in 1947. <laughs> and it even tells you what they did. AWOL from the military, drunk and disorderly, 1949. It looks like it's by date. Drunk. Assault and battery. Mr. Charles Howard. He beat somebody up in 1943. We heard a lot of things about this guy. The legendary sheriff. He was a hunter. I like him already. I think this is I think John Dewey was the first one. Yeah. First one to tell the one of the These are the laws if you came to Pioch in 1898 to 1906. Keep all the sidewalks wet. Sale of liquor to Indians is strictly prohibited. No young boys in saloons. No dumping hot coals. All children must be off streets. No women allowed on the streets. This is the courtroom. I thought there was a bunch of people in here at first. <laughs> creepy dummies. The judge, to the jury. So once you are found guilty, you come through this door, and here is the jail. It's dark in here, but it's dark and cold. Yeah. Here's the old jail cell. These things would have been tiny. That would have probably been their window. I don't know if that would have seen daylight back in the day or what, but you would have just been in here. This place a lot smaller than it may look on film. Another bed. Maybe this is where one of the police officers would sleep to watch him or something. Yeah. Watch him <clears throat> and feed him. Wow. Oh, this one was a double bunk. Two people got locked up and two people would get locked up in this little tiny room. No bathrooms, nothing. Oh, there was the bathroom. Yeah, they had to come out to go into this little thing right here in front of everybody. Oh, they would have been upset with some people. Four or five stops. <laughs> <laughs> this is where they would have let them come outside for a little bit to get some sunlight. And then you were saying they hung people back there? Mm -hmm. So that was the public hanging area, and right here would be where you'd come and view it, I guess. So. Yeah, people were morbid back then. Yeah. Kind of back in the day, Everything was public like that, all the public executions and stuff. We're walking up towards one of the old hotels here. It's been on the Ghost Hunter show. It's been all over like world news as being one of like the most haunted hotels yeah. in all of Nevada. Have you had any experience with it? Do you know anything about it? I haven't had an experience, but there's been some people that are like, oh, you know, I was sleeping and something slammed the bathroom door, yeah. just random things like that, but. So we've been to like the Ms. Paul, a couple of the, I don't know if you're familiar with Ms. Paul, mm -hmm. a couple of the haunted ones here. We've been wanting to stay there, haven't gotten around to it yet, but I've always just heard that it's extremely haunted and that people have been murdered in there and all these crazy stories. Yeah. So we'll have to look into that one day. So this <laughs> is your son right here? Yeah. yeah. Hunter? Yeah, nice to meet you. Thanks, man. Uh, is there a lot of fires out here you're fighting? And uh, this year we haven't had much. Yeah, it's been a good year. It's been a good year. Yep, we haven't had a lot. We just got back from the one, the York fire in Vegas. Okay, yeah, we Vegas. we were down there. That thing smoked out all of Vegas. Yeah, yeah, it is nuts. It burned up, what, over 100,000 probably? Uh, around we there? got up to 92,000 acres. Okay. Wow, that's, that's crazy. <laughs> the rain put it out though. So. Okay, that's awesome. It's good. 
Yeah, this used to be a pretty rough town, they say, right? Yeah. A lot, of, a lot of that, I imagine, would be right here with the old bars and stuff. Yep. A lot of people taking claims over other people. Mm -hmm. That's all it took. Bang. Yeah. For it. <laughs> <laughs> she, was, she was telling me someone shot each other over a dog. Yeah. yeah it's pretty crazy. Yeah, man. Those were different times, that's for sure. No kidding. So this house is very interesting right here. The stairs going up to it. They say there's a guy that was very involved with history that, that came up here and built that thing. Some say that his level was messed up. Some say that it's perfect, aligned with the stars. I don't know, what do you guys think? So you're saying this was called the tram, right? Yeah, the tram. we just call it the tram. Oh yeah, the tramway. From the mines up there, they would have taken that ore brought it here and then brought it all the way down to where it was going to get processed further right yep and you said that there was kids that used to ride this back in the day yeah so there used to be one over there by bristol mine and they would ride the tram over and then they'd take the train you saw that road up there that was against this hill yeah to go up to ph1 or towards ph1 they'd ride the train up and they'd stop and walk through town to go to school oh wow yeah. That would be pretty interesting. Goes over all these hills. Yeah, and they weren't like there wasn't actual carts. They'd ride in where the ore would go. Hmm. Just sit right on top, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> it's still going to be sturdy for how old this thing is. Yeah, for being a hundred years old. Yeah, they'd have the sideways, so they'd just come in and fill up at one of these. And this was like a little drop station right here. Yeah, they'd hold the ore up there. And just drop it down and then they'd come through and up and over the hill. Wow. And they were saying that these worked off of gravity, right? Yeah. Yep. Man, it's crazy how ingenuitive these guys were. I know. Just all off gravity. No need for electricity, no need for coal, nothing. Just makes me wonder how they first got it up and over that hill. Oh, yeah. Getting that steel wire all the way over mm -hmm. there. So it looks like there's a bunch of ore they probably would spill down there. Yeah, you Maybe might be a able little to bit. find some silver or something. Yeah. I'm not sure what they were like mining out of that mine. I think it was copper and silver mostly. Mm -hmm. But I know we have some gold veins out here too. One crazy thing about those kids riding in those carts is a lot of silver ore is mainly lead. Yeah. So they'd be sitting around lead, lead all day. Poisoning. A lot of the miners suffered lead poisoning back mm -hmm. in those times. I didn't even think about that. So this would have been a lot of their ore, I think, that they're oring or mining. All the stuff they left behind. You could see all their old wood shafts, big old buildings. It's cool stuff. And then the whole city of Pioch, you're pretty much looking at it right there, all downtown. The interesting thing about all these places is they had one thing in common. They were all chasing the magical ore. They were coming from the east coast, headed down here. Gold, silver those things would make you rich overnight if you found the right vein so all of this was created from that and now that they're no longer mining and stuff how long do you guys think these towns will last do these towns last another hundred years because these kids are growing up here and a lot of them are moving away what do you guys think do these ghost towns stay operational or does everybody move out one day so this mine right here was poch mine number one they were saying so they're not exactly sure why it was called one. Uh, they think that the train, the old train that came through, would stop at this one first and have a little number order to stop by. But they're saying that this mine went 1,400 feet deep. And it's crazy because all the stuff's left here. And when you think about it, a lot of these places, like these buildings were built in the late 1800s, very early 1900s. And it just puts a statement on how well you know things were built back in the day. Well, like these wood structures they built, for them to still be standing, it's pretty impressive. I'm just waiting for the day this thing blows over on us. Yeah. I can't believe the snow pack that we got this year didn't take out. How much snow did it get this year here? We got a lot. Yeah. I mean, we went into a state of emergency from the flooding because of it. Oh, wow. So this is the cable system that runs that that elevator to pull you up and down. And how it breaks is if you look at these, they use wooden brakes like trolleys in San Francisco. So these are wooden brakes, so it'll slow it down. 
Oh, wow. so they would just use a piece of wood? Yeah, that's all it is. That's all you got from keeping you from falling to your death. Yeah. <laughs> and this is, it's all run by like bells and charms to know what levels you're at, to pick you up, drop you down. It's also very crazy that for back in their time, they were able to get all this all the way up the mountain know. and know how to do everything, you know? This yeah. is a lot of heavy stuff. Yeah, those older folks, man, they're just ingenious when it comes to building crap like this. Yeah, definitely. What do you think, Drew? I don't know how they were able to bring all this up. Yeah, because they didn't have helicopters or really big cranes. Well, I think it's crazy is like the big metal frame for a lot of it. I don't know what they yeah. used to make that. Especially because back when these were up and going or first being built i mean this was out in the middle of really nowhere vegas was. wasn't super yeah. big no no real big town close by so. i think at one point pioch was bigger than vegas yeah vegas didn't really start kicking off until the early 1900s and this yeah. place was this before was that so. yeah. yep would you go up there for a million bucks too no. <laughs> of course a million bucks is a lot of money yeah i'll climb it right now <laughs> Someone call the fire department to get you down. Yeah, uh huh. That'd be great. This awesome. is Boot Hill. I see a bunch of old dates on there. Well, I think a lot of the tomb or the headstones have been replaced over the years. Okay, yeah, just so you could kind of read them and stuff. Mm -hmm. So this is where those that seventy something people would have been buried that got shot, right? Mm -hmm. Wow. So what's sad is a lot of these tombs back in the day were all built with wood, so they all kind of went away with time. Yeah, yeah. Had a lot. These ones, they look like they did a pretty good job at you know, remembering who the people were. So they put who they were killed by, too. 1870. Yep. So that must have been one of the people. These two right here were either shot or something. They were, they were shot. Shot. Oh yeah. Now that one says killed by somebody and this one doesn't say. And a lot of times they would just throw them down the nearest mine shaft. Mm -hmm. This is just what they've counted. Oh wow. July 6, 1873. Shot during dispute over dog. Guess they lost the duel. The other guy got to keep the dog. <laughs> Sucks to suck. <laughs> How did those work? What happens if someone cheated? turned quick or something you probably didn't get your way in court i'd assume because <laughs> i think back then duels were legal yeah they, they were so yeah. if you cheated a duel then you probably got you didn't get your way in court and probably got hung or something oh, yeah. Yeah, i was, was wondering legal. why why they would trust someone not to turn quicker than that yeah look at you first or second first because if, <laughs> if you hurried up and you shot first then you missed the other guy was allowed to just stick his head on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be eyes. using more than one bullet if I missed. <laughs> <laughs> like, like what happened to this guy? Got shot by an officer five times. So he missed five times. Got shot five times. Yep. <laughs> really messed up. His shooting hand got shot first. Finger finger got hit. <laughs> yeah, it's messed up. Oh man. This is pretty cool. See, some of them kind of get lost with time sooner or later. This place has actually done a pretty good job at preserving. We've been to other ones where half of them are just already gone. Not even existent. Yeah. 1844 to 1873. Feared by some. Respected by few. Detested by others. Shot in back five times from that individual. I'm from ambush. Thought I said that that was their name. <laughs> All these men right here that were shot and stuff, they came out here for a dream. It'd be like you right now, Jew. It'd be like you out at the home saying, you know what? You're living over in New York or you're out east somewhere, Wisconsin, North Carolina, whatever. And you're like, hey, mom, dad, I've got a dream. I'm going to go out west and I'm going to go pursue gold, you know, the gold rush. Yeah. I got a big dream. And you end up being shot five times in the back yeah. in an ambush. I That's mean, one thing I was wondering though is what drew so many people to this area specifically. Was it the gold or gold the and crystals? Because at the museum I saw they had all sorts of really interesting crystals and stuff. So gold and silver. No. So that, that's what's crazy is if you would have come out here back in those days, you had no communication home. You pretty that's much insane. don't know if you'd ever see your family. And if you yeah. ended up in a grave here, these people's parents probably no never knows. never knew what happened to them. Just goodbye. Look at someone wrong and you end up getting shot. 
crazy thought that people come out here in the middle of nowhere and make something out of nothing, you know? Yeah, and the life was tough, so no no cars, no AC, no <laughs> heater, and then on top of that, other miners wanting That's to kill you. That's what fascinates me the most, so is them being able to build things even just as simple as this, this little thing right here, you know, it just makes no sense how they got all the equipment, all the, just everything to do it all. You think if you lived back in the day, would you be an outlaw or a good guy? Nah, I'd probably not be no outlaw. I feel like it, especially with the rules back then, I feel like being an outlaw puts too much of a target on you. Yeah, bounties your on your head and stuff. Yeah, it's way too much risk. It's already risky enough just being out here in general back in the day, so being an outlaw would be... Yeah, because being an outlaw, I mean, it was already as de deadly as it was. You just, mm -hmm. th that makes sense. You're putting yeah, a target on yourself. Because not only are you bad and doing bad, but there's literally bounties on your head for, what, $5,000 at the museum? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like this man right here that got killed by an ambush. Oh, see, like, and he says like, that, that people didn't really like him is what the tombstone makes it sound like. I mean, he could have technically been counted as an outlaw and people didn't really like him. This place went at least five to ten years without even any sheriff so these were just people Jeez. controlling themselves i mean well, yeah, i guess uh, that makes sense if you have some friends or family and someone's causing a ruckus in your town then they gotta go yep now if you're into history and you're a history guru or just like exploring and checking out new things i definitely recommend heading up here uh one thing is though i would definitely recommend making reserves before you go up here it's a small town so they don't expect you know a million people to come in at once I'm sure there might be Airbnbs around here and stuff, but just, you know, look online, make some phone calls first, just to make sure you'll have a hotel room or that you'll have somewhere to stay. But camping's great out here, outdoor activities are great, the history's great, and the people are amazing. So um, if you end up coming by here, make sure to stop by some of the bars, spend some good money, help stimulate this local economy, and overall, have a good time. So I really do appreciate you guys for watching this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you outdoors.